What's up everybody, this is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today I want to talk about the Gecko Trading Bot and how it can read candlestick patterns for you. So first of all, I just want to bring up the fact that I know last, the last couple of videos, my audio isn't that well. I heard uh, you guys have mentioned on some comments, there's a lot of heavy bass, and uh, hopefully I corrected that in this video and in the future videos as well. So anyway, I think most of you guys are familiar with or at least heard of the term candlestick and candlestick patterns. Basically, when you look at a chart like we do here, you see there's these basically they are candles. This is by default setup, I think, even in trading view. Within each candle, you might have heard of this too. Within each candle, they tell you a story about the struggle between the bulls and the bears and what they did in that particular day or in that particular candle and which size succeeded. So let's say if the bulls won, then you see there's a green candle. If, it's, if the bears won, it's a red candle. But there's more to it. Like within the candle itself, it tells you like if there is a, a long shadow. I mean, I know a lot of people call these wicks, but then it doesn't make sense to have a wick at the bottom of the candle and at the top sticking out. Imagine the physical candle only has a wick on top and doesn't really have a wick on the bottom. The correct term that I learned anyway is uh, shadows. So this is uh, the, the upper shadow and the lower shadow. But before I go into this a little bit more, why am I talking about using candles? Well, I mean, I've always been interested in the candle pattern just because it's something that a lot of people talk about if you read like different articles online, uh, how people predict and use technical analysis. Candle patterns is one of the popular methods of uh, predicting the market. I think there are a lot of different sources where they, you, they charge you like X amount of money just to help you learn about candlestick patterns. And then I remember that Udemy has obviously a bunch of courses and they're a lot cheaper than most places because I think one place I found was like I think Investopedia had an ad like right here, like it wasn't. Obviously it was on the right hand side, I probably have it blocked right now. I think they were charging like $200 for their uh, course. So then that's why I'm thinking, oh, you know what, there's other courses that actually like on Udemy that actually teaches it. And I actually found this one pretty useful, Learn to Trade Candlestick Patterns. So it's I just bought it and I, sh I actually completed it already too. So it costs $10. So it's not not exactly expensive, obviously. So it really depends on you. Like if you guys are interested in candlestick patterns, I recommend this course. I completed it and I felt that it was well recorded. The teacher, he did a pretty good presentation and the quality was really top notch compared to what you can find on other Udemy courses. That's why I don't like Udemy all that much to begin with. But... In their case, it looks pretty good. And the only thing I have to say about this course is obviously it doesn't cover cryptocurrency per se. So some of the stuff that they talk about, some of the candle patterns anyway, I question whether or not they actually apply for cryptocurrency only because cryptocurrency markets are 24-7. So each candle from one day to the next, let's say you're looking at the daily chart here. Each candle one to the next, they close the next minute. So let's say this is from August 7th, 2359 UTC. It closes 2359.59 seconds. That's when this candle closes. So, and then the next one starts the next day and the next, the next second, zero, zero. So there is no gap, not like a traditional market. So a lot of other patterns that they cover in this course here, especially the, the multi-day patterns, might or might not apply. But at the very minimum, those one-day patterns, the ones that actually tell you the story of the day, those I think I found pretty helpful. So uh, it's something that, you know, if you guys are interested in learning, I definitely think that it's useful to, have to take this course. But if you guys don't want to spend the money, as I often do not want to spend money on these things, but you know, in this case I did. Anyway, so the other option is obviously just in Investopedia, the different pages. If you look up Investopedia, they will have definitions for all the candlestick patterns from spinning top to tweezers, which I wanted to bring up uh, in a little bit. But also there's the, the, all the other ones like hammer, shooting star, Hanging Man, there's a lot of patterns. So uh, there's this cheat sheet that I found, I'll link to it as well. So this is the candlestick cheat sheet and it has all the bow, bear and neutral patterns. I've seen this chart, I've just seen this sheet, cheat sheet probably like last year. And one problem I have with something like this is that there's no way I can remember everything, all the different patterns that exist. So what I came up with is why not have Gecko actually read these candlestick and be able to tell you what that candle is for that day whether it is a doji a spinning top or if it's a particular single day pattern like a hammer or even like a dragonfly doji so it'll tell you that so that you can then use that information to interpret the market so that's what i did here with this particular strategy i just call candlesticks you should be able to find it on my 
GitHub repo once this video is up and I'll have a link to it. This strategy will send out a message if the message, if the previous candle matches a spinning top, a high wave, a doji, a long day candle, a hangman, a shooting star, a hammer. I mean, all it does right now is only single day candle patterns. It doesn't do the multi-day patterns yet, but I do have the programming in here to handle the multi-day multi -day patterns. Explain, I'll explain that in a bit, but the point being here is that this particular strategy doesn't actually do any trading. With Gecko, you don't have to set up as a trading bot. You can have it set up, in this case, like a paper trader, and then just have it send out messages. It'll alert you, and in this case, it'll alert you when something's happening. In this case, it'll alert you when that candle closes, and it'll tell you what kind of candle has just formed. So let's go into the strategy, explain what it does. So the first thing it does, actually, it needs the largest candle. What it means is that in order for the strategy to work, you need to go back. Like, I mean, obviously, let's say that, for example, if you just look at this one candle right here, actually, you, you can see how your trading view is skewing, how it looks. So, but like, if you just look at the, the, let's say, not even look at the last three, four candles, we'll look at this one last candle right here. And you, can you possibly tell what kind of candle it is based on just this one candle? I mean, it's impossible. I mean, you, you'll be obviously naturally looking at these three, four candles that preceded it. And it's the same idea, you know, that I have Gecko do. It's just that it needs more than just the previous few candles to understand the size of the candle that it's looking at for this particular day. What I have set up here is the largest candle. This is an array and what it is is it stores three information that's needed, the open, the close, and the length. They will use the length to compare it to other candles. So let's say that it has found a long candle. For example, let's say that this is a long candle, okay? So this is what I found as a long candle. And from that point on, they can compare this to these other candles in hand, and this will look like a spinning top, and this will be a long day candle. It will be able to define what a spinning top is or what a doji is. So these are dojis, for example. Dojis are basically a candle with a very thin body or no body, basically. And then there is a long shadow, a up, long upper shadow and a long uh, lower shadow. But it couldn't define this if it doesn't have that information of what a long candle is. So that's why it needed to have the information on the largest candle. And the second thing it does is the open and close. So it needs to know what the open and close of the largest candle is. Just to give it a reference point on where this candle is in relationship to the market. Because it's one thing to good to know to actually define what each candle is and Gecko telling you what each candle represents. But it's even more important for it to know where in location the candle is compared to the support level and the resistance level. So let's expand this chart out even more a little bit here so you can see it from daily here. So this was previously support. We previously had support around here. I could draw a line right here. So we previously had support right over here, but then we broke support and now we have a new low here. That's just our new support, for example, right over here for Ethereum. So this is our new support currently. So it's right around here. So it's very important when you read candlestick patterns to know where the support and resistance is because that's where these candlesticks patterns are the strongest signals. If it happens somewhere in between that, it might not be as strong of a pat of a signal. So definitely important to know where the location of the candle is in relationship to the support and the resistance. So back in the strategy here, the, in the update function here, what does it do? So first thing in the update function is it checks if the candle is an open or closed candle. Open candle means is that it's, it's a positive candle, a green candle. And the closed candle is a red candle. It needs to know this information so that it can calculate the candle length properly because, again, let's go back to the cheat sheet over here. So you look at it, this is the candlestick basics. For a closed candle, so the open is on the top here and the close is at the bottom. For an open candle, you have the closes on top and the open at the bottom. So you need it to be able to subtract the two. So let's say you need to subtract from the close to the open to get the length. But then if you try to subtract the close from the open, you'll get a negative number for a closed candle. So that's why you need to know uh, what candle it is first before you can actually calculate the length. That's what it does here in the update function. Then it compares the current largest candle that you have stored in here. So right now, if this strategy just started, it will obviously have zero for the length. So that anything it will be larger and it will just plug that candle in, the current candle into the largest candle and then repeat the process until actually uh, reads enough history. I know right here I have required history go 10. Preferably, I think you would want to have like at least 100 in here. 100 candles actually is only, for a daily chart, it's only about three months. So obviously 30 days per month. 
roughly. So you're talking about like a little over three months for about 100 candles. And that I think at least gives you a decent calculation on what is the largest candle is. And then that's how you can then calculate what is a spinning top, which is those these tiny little candles over here. Once you have that information, once it actually goes through the process of actually finding the largest candle, it also push the current candle into the candles array. So I have a candles array set up somewhere around here, right? Over here is an empty array called candles. And what it does is this is what you really need to determine those multi-day patterns. As I mentioned before, like those um, two-day patterns, like the bullish engulfing, tweezer bottom, tweezer top, so, or even the three or more plus candle patterns, like the morning star, the three white soldiers, the three black crows. I just find it too hard to remember everything. That's again the reason why I came up with the strategy so that you don't have to remember everything. You just have Gecko tell you what that candle just closed happened to be. I push each candle into this candles array here. If it holds more than 10 candles, then what it does is actually it deletes the first candle in that array. So what it does then is that it will keep from let's say 1 to 10 to 2 to 11 to 12 to 13 so on and so forth. So it only keeps them the 10 most recent candles. Again, that's what you really need. You don't really even need that long for some of these patterns. So some most of these patterns are here, like three, four day patterns, like this one's a four day pattern. You can use candlestick patterns for intraday trading, but they're probably most useful for like higher time frames. At least probably like four hours or more. Probably definitely a daily candles are fine. But at the minimum, you can set the strategy to run on five minute basis as a way for you to learn and remember how these candlestick patterns work. So you can read the pattern first and then have Gecko tell you are you correct because let's say that you do it one minute before Gecko informs you what the next candle is and then you just look at the pattern because it hasn't closed yet but when it closes it's pretty much similar or very close to what you expect it to be you can then have Gecko pretty much tell you whether or not you're correct and in this way this is a way for you to remember and learn to read candlesticks pattern correctly so anyway, the check function here is really just simple. It's like from this point on, pretty much most candles are either a spinning top or a form of a spinning top or a long day candle. There's really only two varieties. A spinning top is a very small body and then it has very long uh, shadows. And then a doji is even is like a even smaller body than a spinning top. I would say probably 80% of the single candle patterns are spinning tops and then you have these like marabuzu which is a really long candle with no shadows at all a lot of these the hammer the inverted hammer the dragonfly doji the bullish spinning tops all of these single day patterns are really fall into the spinning top criteria and pretty much that's what it does there are a lot of statements in here so it gets a little difficult to read but um again first thing it does actually before it does it goes into the if statement on determining if it's a spinning top or not, it's actually, it determines the, the trend, the last three trend, if it's going up or down. There are three closed candles before you have the hammer forming here. So it needs to read from these three previous candles before it actually um, can confirm that it's a hammer. So that's what it does here. It forms a trend first, whether it's an uptrend or downtrend, based on the three previous candles. And from that point on, it'll tell you whether or not it is a high wave candle or a uh, or the, or doji I mean the default is a spinning top but there is a lot of different options so within doji even there are different types of doji there's the dragonfly doji the tombstone doji so it is a really ugly nested if statement uh, a bunch of if statements but that's unfortunately the only way I can think of writing this strategy but it pretty much cover every single one of the single day uh, candle patterns as I mentioned I, I will probably add those multi-day patterns sometime down the road. So one other thing I want to point out is that it does have this here. So report if candles are within 10% range of a resistance or support indicating a strong signal. This strategy obviously doesn't know where the resistance and the support is. So you actually have to give this information yourself in the config file itself. So you would actually see here you, you will point in uh, the resistance and support. Obviously this is um, Litecoin, so each different coin you want to put in the proper resistance and support so that then it can report to you whether or not it is a strong signal or not. So if it is within 10% range of support or resistance, so it could be a stronger signal and this is something that you want to pay more attention to. That's basically it. So the bottom line is this. Gecko isn't only a trading bot. You can also use it to help you interpret charts, whether it is candlestick patterns or traditional chart patterns, which I haven't done yet. but something I'm looking into. 
Combine it with push bullet or telegram alerts and it is a perfect companion for swing trading the market. So that's my video for today guys. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining, it isn't worth speculating. Peace out.